This is the motto of the show Hour of the Truth. Rome never changes. They used to call us heretics and sent the Inquisition to kill us. Today they call us terrorists and send on their crusades. Times and methods may have changed, but goal still stays the same. Extirpate the remnant of the true word of God, Bible believing people. Suffering at the hands of Rome Cause they believed in Christ alone They died through Europe, especially Spain For they saw all but Christ is vain He suffered by his death for men To save them from their awful sin Six hundred years of martyred saints that history cannot erase With iron heel and iron hand The Roman popes rule the land Those ignorant of history May be swept into apostasy We won't be loved by Rome's sweet lie With fifty million reasons why Salvation is by faith alone, in Christ alone, by grace alone. A sovereign God give faith to man. Salvation's in the Maker's hand. This gospel offends Rome today. They offer up another way, a counterfeit. A compromise Beware the ancient Papal lie With such a cloud Of witnesses Who by grace Died in their Lord Recall their Memory to say By the same Faith we live today Hello and welcome everybody to a new video From Juggler 66 Hour of the Truth this will be a very short introduction because today I have again my guest Robert Newman from the United Kingdom as my guest on Hour of the Truth and we are recording the second part of the law in the modern times. If you have missed the fir first part just look in the playlist of Hour of the Truth episode 55 from the 14th of January 2017 and today, three days later, we are recording the second part of The Law in the Modern Times on the 17th of January 2017. Well, we always do two broadcasts on that because Robert has so much to tell and the problem is that he is so busy that he will be not very often available <coughs> for me to interview him and ask him about these things and uh, to tell us about all these things uh, which are so wonderfully interesting and a subject not many people have any knowledge of. So I just want to ask you a little bit of patience before Robert maybe comes back another time so that we can make a fifth video together. I very much look forward to do that and there is so much to talk about that we will surely do that but we have to take into consideration that he is a busy man also. So without any further ado I hand it over to brother Robert from the United Kingdom. Hello Robert. Thank you Jörg. It's good to, good to talk with you again. Thanks for asking me again to speak on uh, these subjects. Yeah, thank you, Robert, for coming, because I know that you are very busy and uh, I would have even liked to do man many more broadcasts like this. Uh, <laughs> well, I, hope, I, I hope you still think that uh, it's a little bit we're struggling with. Um, we're trying to condense many things into a <clears throat> small, con small container. Oh, yes, but, you know, struggle. We, we, we are yeah. struggling every day as Bible-believing yeah. Christians yes, in this yes. world yes. and the way it is going. Huh? Yes, yes. However, however, um, I think the first half of this, of this hour, or just over this hour, 
will be concerned with um, some small technical historical things and maybe the second part we can start to look at what is called in English the trust or in German is this this the Trauen the Trauen situation the relationship between the individual and the state Oh, that's or, a very interesting point. The, relation the relationship between the individual and the state. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, yeah, from a Christian perspective, from a law perspective. And, yeah. and, and uh, the second part of this, because I really want to talk a little bit about the private side, not only the public side, because it is private public. So you will say, people say, well, yes, Robert, you're talking about the public, but you're not talking very much about the private. So I... I think maybe the second half I will try to move into that area. That's great, Robert. You know, the platform on Hour of the Truth, this show is for you to right. explain all that to my listeners and my viewers. And I will also <laughs> listen <laughs> and, uh, and, and hear there ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, uh, Germany has had many great researchers in the area of the law, many of them. In fact, the 19th century produced many remarkable researchers. Germany had a good reason to study, to become um, interested in the law because the Congress of, uh, the Congress of Vienna ended the Holy Roman Empire. And there was administrative confusion because of this and also because of the Napoleonic system, which... Uh, was threatening Germany and, and invaded Germany, parts of Germany, as you know, in the early 19th century. So people were looking for a law system. Napoleon had a law system. Rome had a law system, but Rome was temporarily discredited in the eyes, even in the eyes of German Catholic people. So there was a big, uh, there was a big uh, need. There was a need for Germany to consolidate itself. Can, were, I, can I ask a question here? Yeah, sure. You were just uh, you were just mentioning the Congress of Vienna. Yes. But there were also two other secret conferences uh, yeah. of, yes. of Chiri and Verona. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, do you have any knowledge about those? Because yes. those were led by the Jesuits, and they were splitting the world after their. Oh well, yes, uh, of the course. way that they wanted. Can you oh. uh, say anything about those to, to oh, our absolutely. listeners, maybe? Absolutely. There, the intention of those two secret conferences was to make it impossible to have a government which would be accepted by the, the people. That, that was, that's the objective, is to create a government that is unpopular. And In, in other words, um, putting, putting, into arrears, putting into arrears what was done with the founding of the United States of America... Yeah, you cannot have that a German... There will, no be, that there will be no repetition of that. Yeah, you, you, you cannot have, uh, in the Jesuit thinking, you cannot have a government which is uh, interested, gives the priority to the people. If they give the priority to the people, this would be a big problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, they, they have an agenda, you know. The... the, 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 uh, the uh, The Jesuits had an agenda. Their agenda was to make German people fight English people. Yeah. And, en and English people to fight German people. And everybody to fight everybody else because they would manage this, this, this situation. And they did this, this situation. Um, in Germany, they wanted to have, first of all, a law system. But they didn't necessarily want the Roman Catholic system. And this is, this is the amazing research that is going on in Germany at that time. They knew there was a law. They knew there was the Bible. They knew they had a long history of the law, as I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. They knew about the will, the wills, the power of the wills, even before England in, in history, in the ninth century. They knew German, the Germans uh, uh, knew about these things a long time before the rest of Europe, in fact. And... And uh, these facts were <clears throat> known in England eventually, especially in the 19th century. So there was very close co uh, cooperation in these studies about law. 
Everybody was very interested in law. England was interested. And one of the greatest researchers was this Otto Friedrich von, is it Gierke? Gierke, Gierke yeah. Gierke, Gierke. Otto Friedrich von Gierke. He was a, he was a, um, he was a very good student of, uh, of historical German law. And he, he uh, wrote several very large books. Some of them were translated into English, in fact. They were, that, they were very important. And uh, the, he had his critics, the critics of the Roman Catholic Church in Germany were critics of Otto Friedrich von Gierke. And would you would you say uh, is is it safe to assume that he was a Protestant then? No, I don't think so. No, I think these people, Maitland of England and Ger uh, Otto Friedrich von Gier I don't think you can look at them as religious people. Well, I think I think they were secular. I think they, the uh, uh, it, when Maitland died in nineteen hundred and six, he could easily have been a Roman Catholic, but he wasn't. When he died, when he died, I think he died in Corsica. He he was only sixty, but when he died, he was buried in a cemetery. He has a simple cross in his, in his, um, on his gravestone. He he could easily have become a Roman Catholic, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. So for us, the greatest uh, uh, historian of English law is is this um, sixty years old uh, uh, Maitland. Who gave these amazing? He was a good friend of von Gierke. Yeah, and um, they, 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 these these two were create were producing this amazing evidence about equity and uh, other things. Yet yeah, things that the Catholic Church didn't want people to know about that. Well, when they are more or less enemies of the Roman Catholic Church and they die more or less a little bit quote unquote too young. Yes, uh, we can always have our suspicions that the yes. masters of the poison are behind that, right? Yes, he was. Uh, Maitland was very ill for at least ten years, but uh, the last of his lectures is are amazing. But, but uh, together with Gierke, what is so important about this is that the German people were certain, the researchers were certain, that the law of England was very compatible with Eng with uh, Germany and German law was because it come from the same Bible. It mm -hmm. was, it's the same origins, it's the same roots, it's the same basic things. And and uh, and this, the 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 will, the, pr the the private will of a family, to leave property for your family which the state cannot touch, is very dangerous. Things uh, these things uh, are potentially very controversial things. The le the legal industry want you to have a will, but that will is different from what what we're talking about. We're talking about a lawful will. Other people are talking about a legal will. There's a big, there's a very big difference. Yeah, I think the difference is maybe easy to explain when you look in the world around today. When somebody dies and he leaves his uh, heirs something worth, whether it's an estate, meaning ground or a house or whatever, uh, this all has to go through the notary. This all yeah. has to go to the state. We have to pay. Exactly. Uh, you have to pay taxes and all that stuff. Yes. Because of it, because you have a will. That is not confirmed to the will of the Bible. That is not uh, confirmed to the will of, uh, of of the law that you are talking about, right? Yes, yes. We are yeah, talking it, about two different kinds of laws here. Exactly. The one exactly. that 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 yeah. uh, gives us the assumption, the idea of being free, and the other one that really sets us free. I think that is what we talk. Absolutely, about, right? absolutely, absolutely. Uh, that that the man has the power, but he doesn't know it. He has yeah. the power. He has the power to secure his, his, his home, not for himself, but for his family. He can do this. There, there are ways to do this. And, and the legal industry don't want you to know these things. Of course and, not, because otherwise they don't get any money from you. Anymore. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, it, you know, there were family it's Bibles. Like, it's like why the Sadducees yeah. and the Pharisees yeah. in the time didn't want Jesus to be Jesus, because they were, he would put them out of a job. 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and another another important thing, when men started to write things down on pieces of paper, um, instead of a verbal contract, if you went to the, if you went into a market, fruit market, you can make a verbal contract with the fruit seller, and in thirty seconds you have your bananas or you have your oranges, and the transaction, the contract is already finished. Just like that. There's no no paperwork, nothing. Finished. That's a contract. And then there are other contracts which are technically difficult and, and, and a mortgage. Nobody's reading it. Who understands it? Very clever things, no? But the actual purchase is extreme. The contract is extremely simple. Usually verbally, it's a verbal contract. Well, and then isn't they isn't yeah. that the story of our life, Robert? Yes. yes. That everything that we experience in the system that we are living in is so complicated, yes. whereas the truth is so simple. The truth is simple. Uh, I mean, when you take the Bible, the Bible was written for every eight or nine year old to be understood. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. And everybody understands the easy way of salvation that Jesus Christ and the Bible offers to all mankind by just faith through grace given by God, we are saved by the name of Jesus Christ and nothing else. Mm. And then you look at the different religious systems that we have in the world, and let's just, for easy, because we are talking about the Bible, let's just take, for the easy way, take uh, Romanism, Catholicism, which calls itself Christianity, which it is not, and then see how difficult they make the way of salvation. You have to yeah. earn your way to salvation mm. through sacraments and works, Yes. and all that stuff, and then you are still not safe because you first go to purgatory. Yes. I mean, when you study that a little bit and you see how difficult they make that, and then you see how easy the Bible makes that, and then you transfer that into our life and our system that we are living in, everything is actually so easy, they only make it so complicated that we don't see the easy thing. <laughs> Very but, true. I mean, it's like it's 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 like you could say, well, when you want to hide a tree, when you want to hide the tree of knowledge, you can best hide them in a forest, right? Yes. <laughs> yes I, I think that's that's about what they do. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I thought oh. it was an interesting parable to to see about. And everything yeah. is actually when you when you when you first when I came first to the Bible, I could not grasp that it all is that easy. Because yes. in this world, you always have to study. From, from, from little on, you are put into schools and then put yes. into universities. And when you have that, then you have your master degree and this and this and this. You need to study and have this and all that stuff. Mm. And yeah. then you know it all, they say. But actually, no, the truth is much easier to be found. Absolutely. Uh, Moses was trained in all the wisdom of Egypt. But but God, when God got hold of him, he sent him into the desert to burn all of his education out of him so that he could be useful to God. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with St. Paul. St. Paul was a highly educated man. He thought he knew everything. I think there's many examples of that. I think Luther was a highly educated man. Yeah. And, and there have been... Many highly educated uh, people who uh, they had uh, they more or less had to forget what they knew. And I, I've met doctors, I'm sure you've met intelligent people who will tell you, Robert, the things that I learned in the university, I had to forget them because they're simply not true. And, and you learn these things that what we are told in history is not necessarily true or what we are told in science is not necessarily true, but they believe it because without the dogma, well, what do we have? This is the scientists, yeah? They have to have a little bit of dogma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't that true? That's, that's all they have, you know? That's all they have. They just, they, that they, so they, they, all of their theories can be duplicated and disproved, and they call that science. So, if, if scientific theories are always collapsing, that must mean that scientific literature is becoming more and more science fiction every day. Hmm. But they don't call it science fiction. It's just a failed theory. Well, that, that's science fiction, something that the people believe. Um, if you stand in front of the television 
or cinema, when there's a science fiction program, uh, people don't like it, of course, because it's a form of entertainment. And science is like that. Science is telling you that God doesn't exist and, and they, they know everything. The historical sciences, yeah? Mm -hmm. They tell they know better than they know better than, than God, they, they they think. Which is kind of stupid, but they, they believe that. That's that's the beginning of their education. But it's the end of their education, but it's also the beginning for them. Mm -hmm. And the 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 professing themselves to be wise, they became, became fools. fools. Yeah. That's 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 exactly the academic world. I mean, I'm not saying that God can use intelligent people, but I don't think it's so easy these days. It's the uh, vanity, you know, where people are attracted by this academic. Uh, what's the word? Alumni, the alumni. They 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 have PhD, LOD, or something like that. Yeah. But okay, anyway, I didn't. Anyway. I didn't want to interrupt you from the. Uh, Sorry, uh, from the right. Speech, so, 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 Gierke, uh, this uh, Otto Friedrich von Gierke, I strongly recommend anyone who might have a look at that private law that he wrote, which is, I have never read it, but it was highly recommended by, uh, uh, you know, English people to to read this, and my German is completely useless. So, <laughs> anyway, so anyway, um, uh, okay. I want to talk about uh, a few words, um, the etymology, etymology, or the, the meaning of diff of certain words. Mm -hmm. This the word domicile in English is in German is is, is domicile, is it? Domicile, yeah. Domicile, domicile. Yeah, the place of uh, where you reside. The place where you reside. Okay. The place where you reside. When a baby is born in the modern world, uh, this is the government, what the governments, they all agree about this, um, that when the baby is born in the world, it receives, shortly after it's born, the government uh, gives it a domicile. domicile. It's called the original domicile. domicile. Mm -hmm. And there, there are rules for the original domicile. It, you know, the bureaucrats have thought of everything. Uh, normally, the baby will receive the national will receive the domicile of its father, of its father, right? Uh, so, uh, if your father is Greek, is uh, uh, Japanese, you will receive Japanese domicile, uh, even if you're even if you are born in Germany. You will receive a Jap he will receive a Japanese nose. If you're traveling in a ship in the middle of the Atlantic, the baby will receive the domicile of his father, his natural father. But if his natural father has died, he will receive the domicile of his natural mother. That's internationally agreed. Everybody agrees with that. Yeah? That's... Okay. So, so everybody has a domicile. I have a domicile, you have a domicile, we all have a domicile. And every baby has a domicile. As soon as the baby is registered with the state, the state will give it the original domicile. And most people in the world, they keep the same domicile all of their life. They never change it. It never changes. And you, you have, for them, it never changes. You have to uh, have a domicile. You have to have one domicile or another domicile. It doesn't mean nationality. Nationality is something else. Domicile is the system which is control or not controlling the system which is in charge of the individual. The domicile. You get the word dominion or uh, or uh, dominate. <laughs> yeah very strong dominion. Uh, so domicile is the controlling interest of the individual. And if you're, if this controlling interest of the individual is, is uh, let, let me give some example of why this is important to know this. Um, uh, can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Oh. 
Oh, you can hear me, right, okay. If you are a baby, you cannot get a mortgage. It's obvious, no? If you're That's a baby, obvious, yeah. if you're a baby, you cannot get a driving license. If you are a baby, you cannot enter into a commercial contract. There are many things you cannot, you cannot fly. If you're a baby, you cannot be a pilot for Lufthansa. <laughs> yeah, you can't fly an aeroplane. And you, you, so there are many things a baby cannot do. It's obvious that he cannot do it. He doesn't have the mental, mental capacity to, to do these things. The baby is still a baby. And when it reaches a certain age, it's supposed to have the mental capacity to, to be able to get married or make a contract or make a mortgage or uh, do these things. He can become an airline pilot and all. Of, he can go to university, get an education and all of these things. So, however, however, if the individual reaches the age well, let's say 18 or 21, and he does not have the mental capacity to make a contract or get married or enter into a mortgage or get a driving license. If he has a mental problem, you know, he's mentally unable to do these things. Mm -hmm. There's a problem, no? No. Then there's a problem. Now, that's... That's what happens when a man reaches that age. When he reaches that age, he's supposed to take care of his own, uh, let's call it, um, estate. We are supposed to take care of our estate when we, bec when we come of age. In, in the Jewish faith, I think it's called bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah, you reach a certain age where you are able, as a young man, to to accept that you 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 have certain responsibilities, certain things you need to do. You have a family. Maybe you want to go to university or some. These these things are normal for somebody who reaches a certain time of life. But if these things have no place in our if, if we do not act like a grown-up man, we will consider to be still a child. Still being in the kindergarten. Still in the kindergarten, yeah. If we make no actions which suggest that we are not a child, then the state, then the system, will always presume that we are uh, children. <laughs> yeah. And that's where the mortgage comes from. Heavy stuff, no? To say that. Mm -hmm. You can have a mortgage. Uh, you, you can, you can, uh, they will give you a certain way uh, of getting a house, a mortgage. That is a kind of limited um, uh, arrangement. But you can't make a contract. And there is no mortgage, as I said before. So, People are happy with pieces of paper and they think it's okay or they can make a will and it's a legal will. Nobody really cares about the law. They're just following each other. It's like rabbits following each other. Huh? This is very, very... So you in the law, when you go into the lower court situation, they treat you as a child. You cannot speak for yourself. In the court in England, don't I don't know about Germany. In Germany, if you want to speak in the court, do you need a solicitor to speak for you? I think so. I'm not that familiar with the German yeah? law, and that. All right. Okay. Kind of okay. Uh, in England, you cannot speak for yourself. It's very difficult to speak for yourself. Usually, there is a solicitor who is trying to prosecute. Uh, you, you, you didn't do this, and you didn't do, that. and then you would get a solicitor. It's, it's very scary to do that no to go to a court if you don't know what you're doing 
Yeah. <laughs> right? And and if if you go if you go that's what the law says that you cannot represent yourself because you're only a child. That's what the law says. Is that imagine that? You and every contract that you make, I don't care if you're 50 or 60 years old. The law says you are a child. Can you imagine that? If you tell people that, will they believe what you're, what you're telling them? Well, it's up to you to explain it to them now. <laughs> well, 50 or 60 years old. Uh, if you if you have a contract, not a more. If you have a, if you have a contract, that means that you are able to negotiate with the other people. Yeah, it's obvious. Yeah, if you're going to have a contract, you will be able to discuss the contract with the other side, no? Mm -hmm. But did you, does anybody discuss the contract when they have a mortgage? No, <laughs> they, nobody discusses it. You get a telephone call saying, "Oh, it's uh, it's been approved. Please come into the bank and sign the papers." And oh, oh, can I sign here? Yes, yes. Do you have a ball pen? Yes, yes. Sign it here. That's it. And everybody's happy. Nobody's nobody's negotiating anything. There is no negotiation. Another thing, if you have a real contract, the term, the t the the terms and conditions of the contract is not made by the bank. It's made by you and the bank negotiating together. So you see, this is not a contract. This is only an agreement. Yeah, but the problem is the power. The power, yeah. Because the bank has the power to conduct uh, to to. Uh, to tell me their conditions, <laughs> if yeah, I do not agree, bank, and yeah, if I yeah. do not agree, I don't have a contract. So. Exactly. If you don't agree, <laughs> there is no contract. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, so we we come back to this um, situation. So we need to have power first, then. We, we well, we always have power, but we don't know that we have power. Okay. How we 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 were born with power. <laughs> we were we were born we were born God gave us the power. Yeah, yeah that's right. We were born with power. We are we, Robert, we, but then we gave we, it up. Our parents we, gave it up. Yeah. By, signed, by by giving us by giving us uh, to the state who gives a receipt which is called a birth certificate. Yeah, there's some and, there's and, some and we, are, we are sold into the state from the moment of our birth and we don't even know it. Well, there, there is some truth in there is some truth in that. And but uh, 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 so the domicile is the beginning of this relationship. It's okay when you're a baby. It's okay. You don't even know that that, that they know it's good. You get some benefits from it, from the hospital, from the school, and nobody questions this. But when you get older, oh, oh, then I want to talk about the the word findling, findling in yeah. German, findling uh, uh, in, in English, foundling. A foundling is a baby which has been abandoned. That's a terrible thing, no? Yeah, absolutely. But that's the same in German, the findling, foundling, yeah. Findling, yeah, findling. Okay. Uh, in England, when a baby is born, it can be seven days, six days, three days, four days, two weeks before the baby is registered with the state. Yeah? Yeah. Do you, uh, what do they call a, a registry office in German? What's the word for that? Where, where people register, the baby is born, and you you, you register the baby. What, what is the name of that office? In the, in the, in the public office of the, uh, uh, of the town hall. The town hall, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the so Bevölkerungs the, Bevölkerungsverzeichnis uh, is that, so that is... Uh, where you have the charts of the uh, of the population and then you register with your address and all that stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So re registrator, you have a registrator, no? Yeah. And, yeah. Registrator, uh, yeah. A registrator. So the foundling, the foundling is the status of the baby before the mother and the father, or mother or father, register the baby. Somebody has to be in charge of the baby. Who is in charge of the baby? When the mother when the mother is in the hospital giving birth to the baby, maybe she has a sedative. 
she's almost unconscious, no? Mm. Who who is respon who lawfully is responsible for the baby? The father then. Well the father's not there. Well, he's there for half an hour or maybe an hour. Then what happens? <laughs> no, uh, the state never missed the opportunity. They will make a record. The doctors will make a record. And this child, they don't know exactly who are the parents of this child. There's the foundling situation. Findling situation. I'm, I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist, but you see what I'm trying to say. That that in this space... I thought this little baby is directly after the birth. They get a kind of a bracelet with the names of their father and mother on it so that they know... Who to attribute the child to? Uh, I don't know if that's uh, certain. I, I don't know if that's true. Some places that's true, but uh, somebody has to be re lawfully responsible for the baby. And and the state, and the hospital. You notice the word in the hospital. They have the word wards, a ward. Yeah. Well, a ward can be a prison ward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you also have in in the hospital you have sisters. Yeah, sisters. Mm. It's very Roman Catholic. This is like a like a like a, uh, a like a nunnery, like a nunnery or a convent. No, is the sisters will come to see her in the hospital in the hospital. The priest is there also. All kinds of people doing different official things in the in the birth of the things. Uh, the registrar. Do you know this word Reggie? Reggie means king. Mm -hmm. King. Yeah, yeah, from Regis, yeah. Regis. Regis. Re Regis. Regis. Uh, Regis strata. It means that it's the level. The Regis. The, re re the king. Re reg Regis tree in English. Regis tree. A tree. You have a family tree. Your ancestor, your grandfather, your... Mm -hmm. Grandmother, you, 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 my my uncle, and this is the family tree, no? Registry. So every everybody's interested. To, the registrar is taking these details of the father, the mother, and they're signing these things. So the state accepts some kind of role in the in the life of the individual and the family and the marriage, in fact. It's very, yeah, that's how, and then, so if you look at this, like, uh, what's the word, like a door hinge, it can swing both ways, mm -hmm. it's, it starts off, it starts off, you are subject to the um, original domicile, but the idea is that you don't stay in the original domicile. That was not the idea. You were not supposed to... If you have an eagle in a nest, it wasn't supposed... The chickens were not supposed to stay in the nest for 75 years. No, with other words, you have to change your domicile when you come to age. You have to change the domicile when you come of age, yeah. That, that was the, the original. But the subject of dom... Well, if you say, how can I change my domicile? It doesn't changing the domicile doesn't mean changing your physical location. It just means that you're changing the place where your uh, what is the word your um, where your business is conducted. Mm -hmm. Your business, uh, your you if you're a grown up, you have to have an office where you're working. You're not going to be working in the, in your bedroom or something. You you would if you wanted to have a real business as a grown up uh, doing s serious things for other people. You would have to have a place of business. Mm -hmm. And so when when you grow up, you you will change your place. You're, you're doing this kind of business when you come to this age, and that uh, you can be imagine like a company. The company is now, it was originally registered in um, Berlin, but it's now registered in, uh, let's say, uh, Paris. Or it was in Paris, but now it's in Berlin. So you, you change the domicile. That means you move out of the original domicile into another domicile. Usually that means changing from 
the lower court system into the higher court system. How you move from a lower court system into a higher court system if you have a will. If you don't have a will, you're still in the kindergarten. See? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, yeah. If you have a will, then you have uh, the capacity to make a will. And that is the evidence that you are old enough to accept responsibility. But if you don't have a will, then you're still in the kindergarten. Even if you have a legal will. That's the law. I mean, that's that's not just the law of England, that's the law of everywhere. It's very, very amazing, no? Uh, uh, but that's, yeah, that's exactly right. And some people give all of their will to the state. And that's their life. They, 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 the state is their, is their landlord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's it. That's all they want to know. Um, then uh, let's moving on. Um, oh yeah, a chancellor. I want to talk about the chancellor mm -hmm. in this uh, equation. If the individual never changes the domicile. And he never studies about these things. He never studies about these things. Then the cost of all of the individuals inside the kindergarten is tremendous for the state, as you can imagine. You and therefore, to, all the children have to pay their part. Well, therefore, uh, all the costs of all the benefits and people need housing and babies and uh, yeah, how, and medical care and and the, the the size of the government grows and grows and grows and grows, and this creates big, massive problems that really were not supposed to happen. People become completely addicted to the state. They cannot live without the state. That's true. It's impossible. They cannot conceive of a life without the, the state. But so, in pu in purely financial terms, think of it like an accountancy. the The public side of life becomes full of debt and liability. And it becomes higher and higher with interest rates and IMF and all this kind of thing. Uh, a million, billion, and nobody understands what's happening. And, and bankruptcy, collapses of bailouts and all of these things. This is the cost of people believing in some kind of permanent uh, government. If anything is wrong, no problem. Government will sort it out for us. And then we have the role of the chancellor. In English, this is the word cancellor. There must be somebody who can remove the debt. The Pope says that he can remove the debt. He says so. He can forgive all the debts, as you know, in the year of Jubilee. But he's suffering from amnesia because it never happened. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. If the Pope, if the Pope could, could wipe out all the debt of the Western world, can you imagine? But he, why he doesn't do it? Then he would lose control over us. Yeah, yeah. If he really has the power to control the wealth of the world, and he he does control the wealth, of, why doesn't he he wipe out the debt? Even, I mean, God in the Old Testament wiped out the debt regularly every jubilee year. Why, why, why the Pope doesn't do this? Yeah, because the Pope is the Antichrist. He cannot, he cannot do this. Yeah. So, of course not. He is the but, Antichrist. He cannot act godly. He can only act satanically. Sure. Uh, that's so, why he doesn't. That's why he doesn't, uh, doesn't. Doesn't give us any equity. Doesn't give us anything that we really own. He only gives us debt. Right, so you know the, when I go when I go to the store tomorrow and I buy my groceries and I pay the uh, the clerk um, at the counter with a note of fifty euros, I pay him a, a, a note, a note of debt. It's a debt certificate. It is not worth anything. Mm. 
it's a coup it's a, yeah it's a voucher or yeah, yeah. Uh, but the chancellor the chancellor is the individual who can cancel the chancellor can the chancellor can cancel any debt that's what a chancellor does mm -hmm. cancellor the can word cancellor means to cancel that, that's where it comes from yeah and in in the original original court of 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 uh, of, Christ, of the Christian world, when the original court system came into operation, the chancellor was the head of the original court system. C chancellor. Uh, and I don't know. Uh, people in Germany must know this. I mean, I'm sure Angela Merkel knows that. No, <laughs> does she not? It's prob it's possible that she knows, but she won't tell the lay people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chancellor. Yeah, the Chancellor of the... In England, we have this Chancellor. Chancellor was the head of the Supreme Court in England for mm. nearly 1,200 years. <laughs> it's just... Cr in 1,200 years, we have a Chancellor, and the people who use the Chancellor... They don't know why they have this privilege, but they have the privilege because the Pope gave it to them uh, when they invaded England. They have it and they keep it and the family keeps it. Uh, and it lasts for 1,200, but nobody knows where it comes from. This, this, where does this debt being wiped out, where does it come from? <laughs> yeah, it comes from uh, God because when the baby is born, it's like a cell phone. The cell phone comes with a charger. You buy a cell phone, every, they will give you a charger, no? Mm -hmm. It's the same with the baby. When the baby comes, it gets, it, the, the baby gets, uh, is, the baby is recognized to have title. It's, in, it's ent, we say, it's entitled to something. If it wasn't entitled to something, the state would never give it benefits in the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why does the state give the baby some uh, some some help in the hospital? Why does the baby uh, get the uh, the health care? Why does the baby get the education? Why? Where does that? What's it coming? It's coming from the baby was born with a title, but the title has been trusted to the state until it gets it's old enough to use it for itself that was the original trust idea yeah but the only thing the state misses is to tell the child when it has come of age that it is now entitled to things and do them do them themselves instead of relying well, well, on the state but then, but but this is this you can't we cannot blame everything on the state if we are completely ignorant people we can't really blame it on the state there's a certain amount of responsibility that we have for our ignorance. Some people say ignorance is no excuse. I'm sure you've heard that. Mm -hmm. But we are tremendously ignorant of the law. The evidence of that is that 99% of people are following everybody else. That's true. So, so, so these things about private, private, the private world of the estate. In Germany, you have estates of, of you know, big estates where there are forests and nice houses and horses. And there are great estates in Germany. There are great estates in England. Well, how these how these estates happened? These people were given the privilege to be able to move from uh, from the kindergarten into the high school. And that's really what all of this Otto Friedrich von Gierke and other people, and Maitland and other people are talking about. Mm -hmm. It's the only way that your debt can be dis uh, can be um, can become zero. It's only uh, digits on a page. 
It's on the left-hand side of the page, or it's on the right-hand side of the... If it's on the left-hand side of the page, it's dead. It has to move from one side of the page to the other side of the page. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's the... That that's that's its account. Every every court these days of bankruptcy, all every court is a bank. I told you this first time I said that it's a bank. They're operating to administrate the bankruptcy. Because the bankruptcy is costing the world a lot of money, a lot of value. And it's not getting any better, it's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Why? Because people don't have their own will. They want to follow the will of, uh, I don't know, uh, everybody else. The blind leading the blind. And this is a very big problem. And that's that's my my under, my understanding of these things. And so this ver vertrauen things are real. They're real. Um so uh you you, you mentioned the Weimar Republic of yeah. uh, 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 the um uh the Weimar Republic that came after the First World War. Yes, 1919. 1919, yeah, and that was a sellout of the Germans where everything was made into cooperatives, so... Yes, yes. Did I mention that uh, this uh, this Pope Innocent IV, he was the one that started the trust uh, things in in the Christian era? It's in the 13th century. Yeah, you sent me the Wikipedia page of him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um... He was Pope between 1243 until 1254. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, is I, that, I, isn't that of the time of Henry II? No. Yes, approximately the same time, yeah. 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 Henry II is the beginning of common law in England. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, then what else is there? Uh, uh, I'm going to read an English translation of Something that Gierke, is it Gierke? Am I saying Gierke, yeah. Gierke, Gierke, right. Gierke, uh, Gierke wrote this, and it was translated in English by Maitland. So I'm not absolutely sure that it's a great translation, but this is what he, he said. The idea in Germany of a common law would not die. There was no com- There was no legislature, but... There was a common law, and there was a hope that the law of Germany might some day be awakened. This is the this is the context. He he said, "This is the land of Luther, Martin Luther." Yeah. Is it? And then he 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 regrets. He says he regrets what happened. What is happening, this is in his time, in 1900, he really regrets that men are arguing about the history of uh, the future of Germany. They have different plans for Germany. And he said, you've already got a law. You already have a brilliant law system. But they, they wanted to, you know, Rome, Rome wanted to keep control of Germany. It's obvious. Everything you read about history is the same, no? That's obvious because Germany was always the heart of the Roman uh, of the Holy Roman Empire. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and uh, then he goes. He talks about. Um, uh, Bürgerlich Gesetzbuch. Bürgerliches Gesetzbuch, yeah. What is, what is that? That Bürger- is uh, that is the civil law. Uh, that comes from the uh, 1900s. That is about the time uh, of uh, Bismarck when we had the Second Reich. Ah, yes, All right. Okay. And then the law was written, and the Bürgerliche Gesetzbuch is the civil law of uh, of Germany. Right, 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 right. BGB. It is uh, it is shortened. Bürgerliches Gesetzbuch. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Um, uh, and then he. Speaks about uh, he speaks about um, 
the Pope um, who introduced this this idea of everything is a corporation uh, at an early moment in the development of German of Germany then also came the theory of the corporation. This is exactly what you're saying, and this is exactly what uh, he's saying. Oh, interesting, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I'll just put this translation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's exactly what he, the, that your German um, writer was saying. Uh, let's just put that in the window. Gierke. Ge yeah, yeah, yes, that's what he said. Is, this is a translation. Yeah, I'll continue with the translation, no problem. At an early moment in the development of Germanism, a theory of the corporation which gave itself out to be orthodox Roman theory, and which Savigny had later defined in C Savigny, with Pushing's idea. And so uh, this is... This is I, I know it, many people have analysed what happened in Germany and England hundred years ago but this is coming from a new angle this is this is the, the battle for the control of the law system of Germany wow and it was a very dirty battle yeah it's almost like the war is being fought again and again yeah? that's interesting what the translation says here Georg Bachelor who lived at the father who lived to be the father among Germanists. You will never, he said, in effect, force our German fellowship, our German Genossenschaften into the Roman scheme. Yes. We Germans have had and still have other thoughts than yours. Since the Roman corporation, the Universitas, has been in the crucible, Romanists of high repute have forsaken the Savinian path. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, I, I strongly uh, rec yeah, he recommend this, this, this writer. According to Gierke, the first man who used this famous phrase of corporation was Sinibaldo Fieschi, who in 1243 became Pope Innocent IV. Yeah, I just wanted to say, yeah. that's uh, Sinibaldo Fieschi, that was uh, Pope Innocent yeah. IV, yeah. Yes. Um, and... So th this is this is the information I have about about Germany. There were various other researchers, but in England, in England, England kept the the law of wills is the only the only thing that England would never or Britain would never compromise in when they joined the European Union. The one thing they will never compromise about in 1960 when they eventually they started to be to cooperate with the Europeans in Strasbourg and various other places. But that was the one subject they will never, never compromise on this, um, uh, the will, we are testamentary wills of, of property. And most European people didn't understand this English system. The English system is the biblical system of wills. And England would not concede, and and and, but England were not very enthusiastic about the European Union. And in 1960, they finally decided to make an appearance in Strasbourg. It was the ninth conference mm. in Strasbourg, and they were talking about wills, because the globalists want to have one kind of will, a legal will. England didn't, or Britain didn't want legal wills. They wanted testamentary wills. There's a big difference between legal wills and testamentary, or the, 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 the true testamentary will is very different. And, and it, Strasbourg, they didn't care about what England was saying. It was sounded very esoteric and nobody cared about it. And still to right now, the, this, these wills are very powerful in the system of United States, Canada, Australia, um, these are the equitable wills around the world. It's just an accident of history, as I said last time. So this Hague Convention was in 1956, 1960, and it was then that the British said, we will compromise on anything, but we will not compromise on this. And it's still true 50 years later. Mm. That's how important it is.
this was in the the Ninth Hague Conference on Private International Law. Uh, no, who cares? But it's so important, these things. I think that also has to do with the Brexit, right? Where we got uh, the I think exit of, the, of, of Great Britain of the European Union last year. Uh, if you if you look into the history of the law of England, you you have you have um, in sixteen seventeenth century, it is the law of England that that England shall not be subject to the law of a foreign power. Yeah, that, that was the time when England was strong as a protestant country. Yes, yes, but th but this was the law at the time when the politicians joined the European Union. And then they said, yes, we will give you a referendum. But that was 29 years ago. And eventually, eventually they said, yes, yes, we'll give you a referendum, we'll give you a referendum, we'll give you a referendum. Uh, I, I am not a political individual, but it's obvious to me th that... Rome wants to control everything. It's really quite simple. And the one thing they cannot change about it, England is a very big problem for the, the attitude of the English, but also the Germans, I think. Germany today is asking big questions, about, not about the European Union, but about the future of uh, the world, the policy makers, the po Politicians, generally. Nobody believes in politicians in, in England. Nobody believes in them. Uh, that, yeah, that's it. So it's not, I don't want to be political. I don't want to be, um, I believe, the socialist or the Green Party or uh, the Christian Democrat. It, to me, it's all childish rubbish. It is. Yeah. It absolutely is. So... Um, yeah, these, 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 the 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 equitable will is where the debt in the in the court today. It's not a, a, a fairy story. It's reality. The the uh, mortgage is cancelled if the man gets to this equitable position. But it's not easy to do that. Mm. It's not easy to do that. He has to change the domicile, as I mentioned already. He, yeah. has to, he has to stop using the national insurance number. He has to stop borrowing from the bank. He has to stop um, uh, being uh, creating debt. And all of the, he has to do certain things. You know, has, there are certain things to do to, 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 to do these things. And that is now more and more interesting to people. But it has to be lawful. It's not illegal. We're talking about lawful. It's not. You're not trying to bring the system down. People love the system. They want more of the system. They cannot imagine a world without the system. Well, I don't want the system. I don't need the system. I want <laughs> to get out of the system. <laughs> well, you know, but it is, it is the truth, no? And uh, uh, yeah, it's so. So there, there are certain things. It's it's very difficult. How are you, how are you going to travel if you don't? Are you going to use money or what? What do you get a plastic card or what? What happen, All of these kind of things. It's it's not so easy. Then you have a tax system, and you have an exemption system from different forms of taxation. It's not so easy. It's, if you lived in ancient Egypt, it's not easy. If you lived in Palestine, not so easy. Israel, not so easy. Germany in the time of Luther, not so easy to live. Not so easy to live today. But, yeah, I'm, I'm passionate about this subject. We, we must... I, I read the Bible and studied the law and uh, still studying the law, and I see that Paul is trying to tell us this thing and nobody's listening. What I am trying to tell you is, in Galatians 4, he didn't have any, he didn't have time to say anything else. George. Mm. George. He didn't have time to tell people anything. This was one of the last things that he said. 
uh, yes, it's very amazing. That's why he went to the head of the uh, the system in Rome. The lawyer went to see the head of the bureaucracy in in in. I mean, it's just an amazing thing, you know. It, I, I, I really think it's just amazing. <laughs> so that's it. That's so. That's the, the there isn't a private law if you stay in the kindergarten, because the public will the public system will tell you that you don't have any privacy. That's the next thing, no? Yeah, I think so. That's the next thing, that we don't have any privacy. Well, yeah. I I heard a story, I don't know if it's true, but um, they were talking about an eagle with with birds in the nest, and the, the birds would not leave, so the mother kicked them out of the nest. No, they didn't want to go. It was very soft in there. Mm. <laughs> but they have to go. And I and I, I, I do I think that there will be a world after the crazy system of the Antichrist uh, uh, has has disappeared. I think there will be a new new civilization, or a new new things will happen. Yeah, Definite. When Jesus Definite. comes back, yeah. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Listen. Um... In preparation, we were speaking about that there is a difference between Roman civil law and Vatican civil law. Yes. Uh -huh. You said that those are two different things. Can you elaborate a little bit on that uh, within oh, a few sure. minutes that we can bring this uh, broadcast to an end because we are already uh, more than an hour busy and I want to keep it quite short, but that would be a nice sure. end to do an explanation to this and then maybe go into what we are going to talk about next time. But uh, even try to explain, just try to explain to uh, our viewers and our listeners um, what is the difference between Roman civil law and Vatican civil law. Okay, uh, okay, that's a good question. What is the difference between the Roman Empire and the Vatican? The, there is a big difference. It depends if you are, what perspective you are looking at this question. In Rome, first century Rome, which is highly corrupted uh, place. Paul met Christians in Rome. There were Christians in Rome at a very early date. No, there were Christians in Rome at a very early date. Yeah. There were, there were people. The word equity was known in Rome two hundred years before Jesus. People were studying about equity. They wanted, they wanted to find some way there could be an equity. Saint Paul was announcing equity in Rome. He was actually announcing equity in Rome. If you study his life, or study the, the the journey that he's taking to Rome, he's telling people. The centurion said, "I bought my freedom." With with big with lots of money, and Paul said, I, "I I didn't buy it. I I was born free." Paul said this. It's not he, everything he's talking about is uh, is talking. I mean, uh, Christianity to me is not just poetry. It's not poetry. It's not just quoting verses or theological verses. It's practical, practical. Jesus paid for them, or the money was paid for the disciples because Jesus arranged for them to pay the tax. That's practical. It's the practical side of Christianity, the law side of Christianity, that we have somehow, uh, I don't know, lost sight of these things. I just wanted to say, yeah, we lost sight of that, yeah. We, 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 no, but it's more than this. It's not, it's not politics. It's just practical reality. Christians are supposed to know the law of God. And as you say, there are many Christians out there who believe that the law doesn't even exist. Right. We were talking about that last time, yeah. 
Because they say the law is nailed to the cross. Yeah, they say the nail. Uh, the no, we live, is, no, we live yeah. under grace. Uh, yeah, that's 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 exactly, and that's a very big. I think this ant, antimonism, isn't it? Or some some word for that belief. Yeah, it's wrong. Of course, I agree with you. But it's it's it's. Do I think? That the world, uh, that our life can be better, if we listen to what the Bible is telling us about the law and practical things like tax. If you want to study tax, uh, why don't you read the New Testament about tax? Isn't that the best book that you can read? But nobody reads it. Why? Because they're Christians, right? Because I can tell you about John three sixteen. It's, it's, it is, actually, I'm not trying to be critical. I'm just trying to be realistic here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. These, there's some practical lessons here. I'm not saying that everybody can be rich. or, or no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the, we are like, um, like wax. We are just melting. The Christian message is melting. There's nobody learning anything. Yeah, it's just, it's like, it's like poetry or prose or something. Mm. What, so practical, you, what you, practical value is it? Yeah, yeah. Could, could you come to a short conclusion by explaining, yeah, oh, by yeah. explaining uh, in, in a few words what the difference is between Roman civil law and Vatican civil law and oh, the impact on, and the impact sure. on all of us? The uh, Vatican, the Vatican civil law, the, the Vatican civil law is the product of following the pagan world in the name of Christianity. That's what the, what's the difference? I mean, I, 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 what is the difference between ancient Rome and papal Rome? In, in, in Rome, there were, there were people who were trying to find the law. In Rome, there was, there was the Jewish law. They understood the Jewish law. There was the Jewish Bible in Rome. People knew the Jewish Bible. They knew the law of Moses. There's nothing wrong with that, yeah? No, absolutely not. I mean, uh, Rome, was, Rome was Rome um, was yeah. occupying uh, Judah at that time, and of course, they were in possession of the Bible. Absolutely, they they were. But but so the so this civil law that we are talking about at that time, uh, the the emperor did not make himself God until late in the Roman history, Imperial Roman history. Ah, okay, that started in 48 BC with the title Pontifex sure, sure. Maximus with Julius Caesar. Sure, sure. And then a yeah. few Caesars kept to, to, to keep that on, and then somewhere in 300-something, uh, I don't yeah, know which pope it was, one, one of the Caesars then refused the title of Pontifex Maximus. Yes, and yes. it was given back to the Pope. Uh, was given back to the Caesar, who was then the Pope in 606 by Phocas. Yes, yes, yes. That's and exactly. Then, and then he got again the title of uh, Pontifex Maximus. And this is very interesting, Robert. And I want to end yes. this here, but leave this with a little note. Sure. Um, this is uh, something that I have to go into a deeper study together with my brothers Brett Norman and Tom Fress from Inquisition Update also. Um, this 1260 years that is talking talked about in the Bible, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, which everybody in the world accepts as being the time frame between 538 and 1798, uh, which is Seventh Day Adventist teaching, is oh, just yeah. not correct because when you listen yeah. to some other writers who are not Seventh Day Adventists and by that are not controlled by a Freemason founded sect of church. Mm -hmm. which is in the end Jesuit controlled. But when you listen yeah. to writers like Henry Gretton Guinness, who wrote Romanism and the Reformation, and when you read Alexander Hislop, you will come to 1260 years between the time of 606 and 1866. Yes. Where 1866 was that year when the protective guard from France Yes, was Napoleon. taken away from Rome, who protected yes. who protected the Pope and the Vatican. Yes, and that was the end of the civil state, and that was the end of uh, his temporal power. Yes. 
Mm. And from that moment on, the Pope locked himself into the Vatican, a prison that held the key on the inside, yeah. until until they furnished up the letter and treaty in 1929 and gave the Pope back his, his civil power and uh, temporal power. But that's something that we have to go into a deeper study for probably some other time. But um, what, do you, what do you think about, uh, just, I know it's really, uh, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, what, what do you think about the idea that the Pope we have right now, or maybe one more, is the last Pope that we will ever have? Do you, do you think there's some truth in that? Well, I do not do... Um, engage yes. in, in speculations like these if this is the last no. pope or, or maybe the last but one or whatever yeah, I yeah. think I, I let me let me answer you in, in this uh, in this way Robert yeah. I think that we are living in quite interesting times because at this moment we have uh, we have um, two living white popes yeah. we have Pope Benedict the 16th who retreated from his post and is still alive and yeah. his successor, uh, Pope Francis the first, who is the first Jesuit on the white Pope seat. Yeah. Uh, we have had until a few weeks ago three living black popes, but Peter Hans Kolvenbach uh, passed away a few weeks ago, and uh, I think it was in November last year. Uh -huh. So we have still two living black popes, uh, Adolfo <laughs> Nicolas Pachon and the new elected uh, uh, Arturo Sosa, who comes from Venezuela. So we have two white popes, two black popes. Which is the first in the history, because normally those uh, offices are for lifetime, meaning that you always leave only with the feet in front. Right, <laughs> right, right. All right. Yeah. Okay. So in that in that mm -hmm. uh, in, in that regard, I think we are living in quite a very very interesting times. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but to say that Pope Francis is the last one, well, let me let me put it on another uh, on another thing. Um, they openly came out, therefore, that the white pope. Pope Francis now is a Jesuit. And in the last American elections, even Hillary Clinton came out very openly for it that her running mate is a Jesuit. Right. And uh, everybody knows that Donald Trump, the president inaugurated in a few days, uh, is Jesuit trained because he really? has uh, two years of Fordham University, which is the Jesuit University of New York, and he has a few years of Penn U. From his five children, three went to Jesuit-controlled universities. Two went to uh, Pennsylvania University, Penn U, mm -hmm. and one went to Georgetown University, and they all oh, have right. degrees from there. Really? Huh? So I, I, there yeah. are the Jesuits are out in the open at every uh, every aspect right now. Right. right. We have the ramping uh, 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 pedophile a priest sodomite agenda all over the world, which is coming to more and more attention to the people. Mm, yeah. And the whole system is going to crumble within a certain time. Sure. And that is exactly what they want, because they want order out of chaos. Mm. And they are now maybe on the way to exposing that our governments in all the nations that we have are all corrupt are mm -hmm. all working against the people. And the more they bring that out into the open, the more they will stir up hate within the populations. There will come civil wars from all this. There will come chaos from all this. And at the end, of course, the Pope has the wonderful possibility to present himself as the so-called Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. Because then he can say, now you see, we have had the old world order where I had control over all the nations until the time of the Reformation. And then we had the civil states and the states that were trying to rule themselves by man government, like republics, democracies and all that stuff. And you see where that led us, that led us into this chaos. And now I'm going to present to you the solution. The global village. No more nations, but one nation under God, under me. I am God, is mm. what the Pope says. Right. And mm. I think we are heading that way. Mm. How fast? I do not dare tell. But that's the way that we will go. 
Mm. And um, let me assure you one thing, and uh, also for our listeners, and I think this is uh, where we should end with. Yeah. When you open up in the Bible, the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, you have this wonderful, interesting verses between uh, chapter 14, verse 12, 13, and 14, the five eyes of Lucifer. Starting with, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the Lord. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. But then, verse 15, yet... Thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Meaning, he will achieve his goals. The new world order will go all the way. Satan will succeed. He will be like the most high. Yet, thou shalt be brought down to hell. He mm -hmm. will have his moment of glory. Isaiah 15 confirms that right. don't you agree yeah yeah um, well i'm absolutely the bible says so it's true i absolutely believe yes so that's where we are heading robert yes well, i uh, do not know what speed we are heading there but we are heading there i think it's later than we think uh, yeah probably it's later than we think Prob so I, I always take that view that there's many things that people are looking to for have already happened or are, they're happening in a way that people don't appreciate. And, yeah, and I, true. yeah, I agree that it will all end. It will all, it'll all end and it will be blown away and God will take control. And I absolutely, I do agree. It's humanly impossible, but it, with God, nothing is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. No, sure. That's right. So thank you very much. For yeah. Your... Thank you, Robert, for your contribution. And, uh, yeah. Whenever uh, you prepare something and think that you want to come back and enlighten yeah. us a little bit more about this law situation and maybe sure. even try to tell people how they practically can get out of the trap mm, that is, uh, I'd, that I'd, is set I'd, for I wouldn't, them. I wouldn't uh, intervene, interfere in German uh, civil things, but uh, I, ju I just want to people to. I would encourage people to study the Bible from a practical point of view. To a practical point of view with these things. These things are important. The tax system's important. It's important to know about mortgages. It's important to know what money is and what money is not. It's important to know what the law is. What does the law say? We claim that we believe the law. Christians, we Christians, claim to, we believe the law. Where did we ever study the law? I mean, in, in, in anything that is actually got any real relevance for us today, such as courts, uh, solicitors, uh, uh, legal trouble. What, what, what do we mean by saying that we believe the law? What do we actually mean by this? And it's, it's not that Germany hasn't produced brilliant people. It's just that nobody's reading anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It just seems to be that way anyway. That's true. Anyway, starting anyway. with starting with the Bible. Yeah, okay, starting Robert. With the Bible. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you very much for being Pleasure. my guest on Hour of the Truth. Oh, I thank think, you. Uh, I will be glad to receiving you another day when we can go on of that and then you can maybe uh, go a little bit deeper into what you just ended with and yeah. tell the people where the law is, where practically we can take out yeah. of the Bible what we can practice in our daily life Sure. to show the system yeah. that we are not their slaves, but that we are men created in the image of God and free and no bond slave to the Antichrist system. Yes, uh, uh, by their fruits. No? You, have to take the, you have to take actions. You have to do things. It's not, we're not philosophers. We yeah. are, and what are, things are, exactly yeah. do you have to do? This is something that you will explain the next time. Robert. Sure, sure. Okay, sure. Yeah, so yeah. thank sure. you very much for uh, being on my show. Thank you. And uh, I wish you a nice day. Any Good further? Good and uh, to my listeners, thank you very much for watching and listening to the video of uh, Hour of the Truth. And um, as always, I will put the email address of uh, Robert Newman in the description box of the video so you can contact him when you have serious questions. 
and he will surely engage when you approach him with questions. And otherwise, until the next time, Jocular66 from Mower of the Truth signing off. God bless you and bye-bye.